Hi everyone, my name is Mad Matt Lugos and welcome to Firewatch. So, if you've never... Wait. 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 Can you guys hear that? Can you hear that? I can't hear anything. I can't hear any clickers. I can't hear any bloaters, runners, wendigos, ghosts. Can't hear any nasalises, dark ones, any creepy photography teachers. I can't hear any of them. It's peaceful. So, there's nothing to be afraid of in Firewatch. I'm so happy. <laughs> I'm so at peace. <laughs> right, so, if you've uh, never watched one of my videos before, um, you know, I like to play single player story based games where I can explore and, and um, focus on the story and narrative stuff in the game. Um, I'm very relieved to be playing Firewatch and not some scary game. I seem to have been playing quite a lot of games that have some sort of scary, murderous horror element to them lately. Uh, but I'm very relieved to be here in Firewatch. So uh, I know very little about the game other than it's about maybe about some guy going through some sort of midlife crisis in the woods. Sounds strangely familiar. <laughs> um, but. Uh, I don't really know anything else. Um, I, I know it's pretty short experience, maybe five to ten hours, depending on how you play. So I'll probably try and keep these episodes to maybe thirty minutes, um, so we don't blow through it too quick. Um, so yeah, if I sound like someone you maybe want to come along on the journey with, I hope to see you here in Firewatch. Um, otherwise, let's get going, guys. Nineteen seventy five Boulder, Colorado. You see, Julia, you see, Julia. Do I need to press a button? She's about your age, late twenties, laughing with well dressed professors and grad students from nearby. See you, Boulder. You, Henry, are out drinking with your pals. Okay, I'm liking the music, man. You approach her. You are drunk. You, yeah, you're pretty. <laughs> so, what's your, you know, major? You slur the word major and it smells like cause. You give an awkward smile. Evolutionary biology, she says, and I'm a professor. Cool, you reply. What's yours? she asks. She sniffs the air. <laughs> Try to be funny. Toxicology. Was that a burn? you ask. She says, definitely. Worries you hurt your feelings. She asks you if you want to split a cheeseburger. One week later, you are Julia's boyfriend. Okay. So I am playing on PS4. I would usually play on PC when I can, but my computer has been misbehaving so much lately and I can capture slightly I can capture in better quality on PS4 so music's giving me a slightly tragic vibe though We're in America, so left. <laughs> you 
You date for over a year. She drives you absolutely nuts. It's great. You move in. You share an apartment near the school with a view of the mountains. You two drink beers out on the deck. You drink beer just about anywhere. Life is good. Julie wants to get a dog. There's a scruffy, undersized beagle. Julie is in love. She wants you to bring it with her. To, she wants to bring it with her to class. There's also an intimidating but gentle-eyed German Shepherd. Nothing bad could happen to Julia while walking this dog. It's badass. Um. Julia, we should probably pick the one Julia likes the most. I know they're making it sound like she needs to be protected by a German Shepherd. I would be, I personally, I would usually pick the bigger dog. I don't particularly like small dogs. But. Let's say uh, let's pick Bucket, just because Julia, Julia likes Bucket. Bucket's a good dog, and a week later you've totally forgotten about the other one. Julia loves him. You love him too. 1979. You talk out on the deck. It's summer, 9.30pm, and the heat still radiates off the high desert. Off of the high desert. What do you think about kids? She asks. Kids? They're not very smart, or good at much. I'm saying if you and I have some, a couple of lit little idiots. Yeah, that would be pretty good. Let's not say why rush. Puts, puts the seed of doubt. That would be pretty good. In that case, we should probably get married. Yeah, I'd like that, you say. These kids are going to be screwed up enough. It's probably for the best that their parents are hitched. You say she's absolutely right. We got our backpack. Out in the wilderness for this little introduction. Just need to turn my volume up a bit. Let's check out the notice board. Make me feel like I'm playing The Witcher 3. Don't forget to check in. You're in the in their country. Learn to live with bears. Two Forks region overview. So, are we at the supply drop? Maybe. Is there a bigger sign telling us where we've arrived? Thoroughfare trailhead. There's Thoroughfare Basin. So, we must be in Thoroughfare Basin at the supply drop, perhaps. The other gate was shut, so. Nineteen eighty. It's a Thursday night, and Julia's four hours late. She doesn't call. You're worried and getting angrier by the minute. She walks in after you've gone to bed. She's not quite drunk, but she's clearly been having a fun time. You fight when she gets between the sheets. 
we should just ignore her. She's had something to drink. It's never going to end well. You don't touch each other all night. The next day, you feel guilty for being so angry and ask her about her evening. She says it was great. You hold onto a tiny pill of resentment. You make some coffee and go to work. 1981 Julia still likes to draw She draws plants from her research She draws all the places you go She draws you um, You pose and flex like He-Man Or you frolic like a Victoria's Secret model Both sound a little sarcastic But let's frolic Very nice Can we see ourselves? Hey! Swing your arms a bit, dude. Wow, this is very glowy, isn't it? Are we, uh, is it, do is it, uh, are we nearing sunset? Two Forks Fire Lookout Tower. Eight miles to go. X to hop over. Nineteen eighty two, two years later, so they've still not had kids. During the summers you and Julia enjoy walking bucket at night. There's a festival in town. Bring, brings in folks from faraway places. One of them tries to mug you with a knife. So that's what the other dog would have been useful for. Bucket gets kicked. Be bar fucked dog. Julia yells. She gets flustered and has trouble speaking when she's stressed. You confront the attacker. Let's scare him away. You reach into your pocket like you've got a gun and threaten to kill him. You manage to scare all three of you. He runs away. Julia asks to take a different path from that day forward. You say okay, you don't want to go that way either. From then out from then on you walk by the river. Two years later, 1984. Plans to have kids get waylaid by work. Julia gets offered a job at Yale. Yale's in Connecticut, two thousand miles away. It's a great job, associate department chair. She wants to move. You absolutely do not. You can't stand in someone's way, man. I mean, why can't you move? I mean, Yale, it's a big place, a big university, right? Agree. I mean, commuting's not a good idea either, but you can't convince her not to take the job. You ask her if she'll commute, 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 commute back and forth. You don't want to move to Connecticut. She says that'll be hard, but she'll do it if you won't move. You tell her to not pass it up if, if it's what she wants. She agrees. She flies back to Boulder three times each semester. Wow. Julia is sent home from Yale on paid leave after having an episode. She lost it on a colleague for borrowing books that were important to her research. She didn't remember she had happily loaned them to him just two days prior. So memory loss? So early onset of something? Something degenerative? She was found crying in the stairwell. You say, either you say that maybe you guys should talk to someone about it, or you make macaroni and drink wine and try to forget about it. Uh, option one, clearly. You say that maybe you guys should talk to someone about it. Yeah. After seeing multiple doctors and having many tests, 
They're worried that Julia might be suffering from early onset dementia. She's 41. We both decide to keep it a secret for now. I don't like this already now. <laughs> man, so many of my, my family members have died to dementia, man. <laughs> oh my god, that broke the tension a bit. <laughs> Gonna have to blur that out. Either. Right. Bucket's getting older. Julia comments that it's kind of nice because he gets in less trouble around the house. A week later, she goes back to to the university. Nineteen eighty-seven. Julia's affliction gets worse. She can't remember things in class. Her research is in shambles. She drives a car to the next town over for no particular reason and has to be brought home by the police. She's devastated. She's sent home on permanent medical leave. Some days you get the Julia who calls you a dope and your unborn children little idiots. Other days you get a stranger. She pulls you into bed to make love. After five minutes, she goes into a panic, believing her dad is at the door. You tell her family they're crushed and begin to make trips to and from their home in Australia to visit her. For a while, your friends come by with little things to brighten the day. She gets worse. Nineteen eighty-eight. You spend your days following Julia around the house. You count the seconds between the two weekly visits from Daniel the nurse. You suggest that Julia could live somewhere else, somewhere with 24 hour care, a home. It sits with you for a couple of months. This, this, is, a, this is a horrid decision to have to make, but particularly with dementia and neurological neurological, de degenerative neurological conditions. Um, being determined to care for someone like this by yourself is, is often the worst thing to do. Because it, you, you feel like you're abandoning them if you, if you take them, if you send them into care. Um, but re in reality, you're not, you're not a carer. You know, it's a full-time job caring for someone with a condition like this. Um, and it's only going to get worse. It's degenerative. There's no cure. All you're gonna, all you're gonna do is, I don't know, interacting with someone who, who's 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 got dementia, who you were close to, is 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 one of the worst experiences you can have, man. Move her into full-time care. So perhaps we're, we're here in the woods after Julia's death, perhaps. And we're seeking to escape. Hello. The family agrees with your decision. You find a fantastic place in Boulder and move her there. You see her every day. Then every other day. You go out to the bar with your old friends. It's not the same. 
You get the feeling that every wife tells her husband, if you ever put me in a home like Henry did, I'll cut your balls off. You slowly decide not to see your old friends that much. Julia's sister Susan moves to Boulder to be close to her. She visits her every day. You go with her some of the time. Susan buys you an old typewriter and urges you to use it if you won't see a therapist. You won't. You've always really liked Susan. Months go by, Bucket dies. Julia doesn't remember him when you tell her. Sometimes it takes her a minute to lock in on you. In the back of your mind you believe it's because you see her less and less. And seeing her less and less makes her forget you more, you think. Summer is coming, and you see an ad in the paper for a job. You take it. So our job is to be like a part ranger, I'm guessing. I mean, the game's called Firewatch, isn't it? Ah, tough stuff, man. Tough stuff. It's always weird with couples, isn't it? That whole sort of on-the-clock feeling with the decision to have children. This is probably the worst, one of the worst decisions he could have made was isolating himself. But I, you understand it. You understand the decision, even if it's not necessarily a good idea. That decision to put her in a home, man, I mean, pe people who's like him saying, his, the wives of his friends saying, you know, you should never do that to me. They just, people like just don't understand what, what dementia's like. Because people end up having like accidents around the home they can set things on fire they can break things they can hurt themselves do you know what i mean they might they might you might end up getting in confrontations with them if they if they forget who you are and they think that you're an intruder and all this kind of thing and it's just you can keep it up for 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 a while but then there's just the mental drain on a human being is just yeah I mean it's different if you're retired if it's if it's dementia when when you you know when you're at home all the time anyway it's just different but if you if he was having to work every day then that's there's just no way you can do it so we're still in Boulder right Right, we need to turn the power on. Hello, Two Forks Tower. Hmm. How did you know I was here? Two Forks Tower, this is Thoroughfare Tower. Come in. Come in. Aha. Uh -huh. Um, hello? Whoever this is? It's Henry, right? Yeah. I'm Delilah. Yeah, that's what the guy said on the phone. So, what's wrong with you? Excuse me? People take this job to get away from something. So, what's wrong? What's wrong with you? That's a great idea. Go ahead. Look, I just hiked for two days, so I don't really follow whatever it is you're doing right now. You take a stab at what's wrong with me. Fine, then can I what, sleep forever? Sure, buddy. Okay, now go ahead. You've killed three ex-husbands, you're rebelling against mom. Nobody back home can stand you. That sounds more complimentary, like she's young. You're just going to wait me out on this? Ugh, fine. 
But what? I'm gonna take a second here and have a guess about you. Was there a timer on that? Let's see. I don't know anything about you, but nine times out of ten, folks out here simply got dumped. Huh, is that it? Close? Good night. <laughs> Good night. Welcome oh, to the job. Man. All right, I understand now that there's timers on some of these responses. Day one. Good morning, Henry. Well, I guess good afternoon. <laughs> you probably slept like a rock. Anyway, uh, there's still a few hours of daylight to get some work in. I can see you at your desk, so call me when you're ready. Hey, sorry, guess I slept in. You got a relaxing, what, 14 hours of sleep? Ooh. Yeah, Jesus, I guess it's what, six? Six. 6.45. Whoops. Don't worry about it. That hike puts everyone out of commission for a day or two. But now that you're up, let me quickly get you acquainted with the job. There's a thing in the middle of your room with a round map on it. Do you see it? Okay, yeah, I see it. This is the Osborne Firefinder, invented in 1914 by W.B. Osborne? You use this to spot, you guessed it, fi- What the fuck? What is it? Nothing, um, you, uh, you use this to- Oh, fuck me! Good God, language, lady. <laughs> Out your west-facing window, are you seeing what I'm seeing? Are those fucking fireworks? Where? I need you to confirm. Do you see them? Whoa, that's not legal, right? Oh. Uh, no. You need to get down there right now and stop them. Fire danger is through the fucking roof. Is that really my job? Your job is whatever I say it is. Look, the closest ranger is like two days away. Go down there and set them straight. <laughs> um. Do you think you can handle that? Can I write them a ticket? Do I write them a ticket? Easy there, Dirty Harry. Well? Get going. You'll probably need a rope to get down the shale between you and the lake, if I remember right. There should be one in the supply box on the way. The code is 1234. It's actually that for all of them. Standard. Sarcastic. Smart. Shut up. <laughs> All right. Got some supplies, glass cleaner. Can we read these? No. <laughs> Death Strikes at 2 by Richard Sturgeon. 12 bodies, 0 leads, 1 man for the job. Thanks for... Look at it. Slides your fingers, Henry. Oops. The singular mind. Don't mind your mind alone. Have you considered... The untapped power of your own mind. Do you often ponder the unexplainable? Do you find yourself seeing that which is not there? Do you yearn to explore the labyrinth of your own psyche? Jonas Allard, PhD, renowned psychoanalyst and Rhodes Chair of Psychology at Loyola Marymount as he explores the power of the solitary mind. This something but accessible treata treatise on the power of the isolated psyche unclogs the avenues of our day-to-day -day thoughts helping us to unlock the psychological potential buried deep within ourselves man as soon as anyone tells you they're a psycho an psychoanalyst ignore them most useless branch of psychology is 
that going to be useful? I can hardly read that then. Hey! Begins and ends in deep red Russia, where they sent him to spy, where they urged him to kill, and where they learned that he wasn't the patriot they'd hoped. Sent to plant the poison pill of espionage inside the dinner of the communist bear, Ray Friedman would return to his government's doorstep, disgraced and disowned by his keepers, forced back to civilian life as a simple comptroller. But with the intelligence and super skills bestowed upon him by the United States government, Ray struggles to fade into obscurity. That is, until a janitor named Claudel Williams reveals that he too was there that the night in Stalingrad, the night everything went wrong, and the truth was made clear. Can two men ever return to civilian life in possession of information that will destroy both themselves and a presidency? Will the government even let them? <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> National Forest Guidebook, Cookbook, Bleach, we don't need that, right? Or oh, paper? Two Orcs map. Escape from two orcs, Diabeth Tooth Point. Huh. So, Witch's House. Is that Delilah, I wonder? So, the Iron Fortress must be where we are. Doom Canyon. There's a treasure chest here by Blood River. Climb check. Required. Climb there, that's where she told us to climb, and there. Goblin cave. There's the goblin cave. Okay, so there's a treasure chest, I wonder if that... So, does that mean we can radio? Hey, there's a map in my tower that I'm pretty sure is not USGS regulation. Um, unless I've unknowingly been assigned to work in two orcs and the lake to the east is made of acid. <laughs> uh, that sounds erroneous. Erroneous. Looks like the previous resident was into fantasy. Where's the draw? Oh yeah, 20 sided dice. Oh my god, Henry! There you go. Eight the hard way. By Richard, another Richard Sturgeon. Neil Black has just exposed the largest underground gambling racket in the nation's history. With the mayor basking in the glory, it's it's only when consequences come knocking that Neil Black called is called on again. Knocking is Neil Black called on again. Neil Black is a lot of things, but a fall guy isn't one of them. Neil beat the odds when the most dangerous something in the mob have his number. And in the something, when a high-risk sting goes wrong, it's only a matter of time before the powers that be do what they always do. Put it all on black. <laughs> oh, come on, dude. Perfect. Not perfect. There you go. All right. So, what was Zoom? L1. May 1989. So, we're in springtime. This is springtime in America, right? Uh, we need to go investigate some fireworks. We need some rope. 
I'm unsure of some of the controls. I think that's all the stuff in here. Can we take our backpack? Beautiful. Not sure of all the. I have had a look at the controls, but I'm not sure of all of them. Can't jump over them. Good times. Guess it's a good good job we can't jump up here. <laughs> How many, how many fireworks have these people got, man? Right, now we can run. Uh, where did she say the rope was? Find rope in the NFS cash box. Oh, so we're down here. So the other map was upside down? No. No, so the fortress they were talking about is up here, maybe. No, it said to the east that the acid thing was to the east. Right. No, I think it was up up there, wasn't it? So that supply cache is the treasure there, perhaps. So, find rope in NFS cash box 306, which is... in what direction? Which is to the northwest of our current location. God, following a compass. Cistern. It's bigger. I don't know why I'd want to turn that. Hmm. I think it was just on the pathway, wasn't it? I don't know how much exploring we want to do. I don't know how what the time passing... What passing time is like in this. There we go. Yeah, we just follow this path, it should be a... Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll start off by doing a few main things, and then I'll perhaps explore after we've tended to this. Supply cache. So, are there a lot of these out in the woods? So, are there a lot of these out in the woods? Yeah, we got them all over the Shoshone. They saved us a lot of back and forth from the trailhead. Don't take all the good stuff. Yeah, all right. That's a really satisfying noise. <laughs> oh, I didn't mean that. Hmm. Granola bar. Cash 306, two fox lookout, medicine wheel, two Jonesy Lake. Can't read that, but there's some updates from previous people. Ron, this is from 1986. Hey man, guy couldn't take it. So I locked up his lock lookout and put some stuff in the box. Found one of those bars you liked. Hiking into the park, but let's get fucked when I'm back. 
Dave. I found a note between a couple of guys. Do people lose their shit out here? I found a note between a couple of guys. Hey, I found a note to a guy named Ron from some guy Dave. That's probably Dave Gaskell. He's completely nuts. Is that right? Hmm. Harmless, but yeah. One of those, you know, fall off the grid and eat ants for a week type. Totally fucking cuckoo. Which is kind of what the job attracts. Does that mean you're cuckoo then? Yeah, when someone says something judgmental about like that, about someone like that, immediately, that always makes me think that it's kind of untrue, and that it's them, like they've maybe had a bad experience with them, and they're just trying to get your bias. Yeah, do people lose it out people here? People lose their shit doing this job? There's a note that says a guy just left his post. It happens, yeah. You're not gonna pop your top, are you, Henry? <laughs> I wasn't planning on it. Let's keep that. Do we really need to talk to her about this? Oh yeah, because of the bears. People just stuff these things with old food? That's how you get bears. Those boxes are bear proof. I wouldn't worry about it. Let's eat it. Delicious. Found the rope, Delilah. Check down that rope. It was right where you said. Great. So you should be set to get down to the lake. Pinecone. Get back in there, Pinecone. Alright guys, I don't want these to get too long, so... No. How did I get into... There we go. Um, don't want these to get too long, so uh, I'll leave that one there. Pretty emotional start, to be honest. Really hit home for me, at least. Some of the experiences I've had in my life with dementia and Alzheimer's. Some bad memories for me, but um, yeah, quite an emotive start. Um, Henry's here, sort of running away from his life, really, at least for for the time being. Um, as we learned the story of Julia, um, who it sounds like he's still alive, um, or you know, as alive as you can be at, at this stage of dementia. But yeah. So I've really enjoyed the starts of Firewatch, guys. I hope you have too. Um, really help me if you leave a like on the video. The likes will get this recommended more and stuff. Um, if you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe so you can join Clan Drummond and see more and see the rest of this Firewatch playthrough. Just remember, everybody, never trust an on crate. Right, I'll see you back in the wilderness.